Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, Midwest LSA Expo around the corner. Mosaic responses mount. Progress continues on Dark Arrow's upcoming aircraft. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our newest programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Midwest LSA Expo just around the corner. One of the more enjoyable events we attended last year was the Midwest LSA Expo, which this year will be held September 7th through 9th at the Mount Vernon Outland Airport in Illinois. Though a little bit lower key than Lakeland or Oshkosh, the Midwest LSA Expo was well run and dedicated to the enjoyment and promotion of light sport aircraft and the community that surrounds them. The facility is outstanding, the volunteer cadre knows what they're doing, and a whole lot of flying goes on for the three days of the show, and does so safely. It's one of the few shows where ANN's chief test pilot Jim Campbell felt comfortable doing test reports in the very midst of the event. The airport boasts an uncommonly good on-site restaurant and a 6,500 by 150-foot main runway with nine and a quarter acres of concrete ramp space. Midwest LSA Expo boss Chris Collins runs a tight ship and has placed all aircraft exhibitor spaces on the main ramp with really easy ingress and egress for demo flights. ANN and the Sport Plane Resource Guide crew will be on site for the event, and we invite exhibitors to reach out to us to schedule test flights and interviews ASAP, as they're going to be really busy. For more information, check out MidwestLSAExpo.com. Coming up after the break, Opener Arrow launches Blackfly Early Access Program. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Opener Arrow launches Blackfly Early Access Program. Air Venture 2023 saw Opener Arrow debut its Early Access Program. The program enables participants to provide Opener Arrow feedback pertaining to their individual customer experiences with the Blackfly eVTOL platform. Featuring a unique tilt aircraft architecture, Opener's Blackfly is designed to comply with FAA Part 103, which supports consumer recreation and short hop travel. Blackfly may be operated in Class G airspace over uncongested areas. Moreover, the contraption may be operated by non-pilot certificated individuals. However, Opener requires buyers and pilots thereof to undergo comprehensive flight training. AEA urges aviation stakeholders to read Mosaic fine print. The AEA staff has been poring over the Mosaic NPRM and has a few observations that are different from others we've heard. Quote, obfuscated by the merry din of celebration are changes to Part 1, which directly affects the entirety of civil aviation sectors to include airports and FBOs, the establishment of Part 22, which sets the certification foundation for all future consensus standard-based aircraft certification, the expansion of the environmental standards applicable to the initial certification and modification of all LSA, changes to parts 43 and 45, significant changes to parts 61 and 91, which pertain to pilot certification and flight operations respectively, and more." End quote. Adventure Pilot introduces iFly EFB 12.2. Adventure Pilot has announced the release of iFly EFB 12.2, an update by which the aviation community may avail itself of advanced EFB features to include integration with Avidyne's advanced flight displays. iFly EFB 12.2 integrates with Avidyne's advanced integrated flight display system, thereby bringing higher degrees of collaboration and efficiency to users' flight planning endeavors. 
Pilots may now share flight plans to and from Avidyne systems directly from the iFly EFB app. Iowa to host Cessna 120-140 Association Annual Convention The International Cessna 120-140 Association is an all-volunteer group comprising approximately 1,000 aircraft owners, pilots, and aviation enthusiasts, bound by a shared interest in restoring, maintaining, and flying Cessna Model 120, 140, and 140A aircraft of 1946 to 1951 vintages. 2023's International Cessna 120-140 Association Annual Convention will be held at Decorah, Iowa's Decorah Municipal Airport, a city-owned public-use airport located two nautical miles southeast of the central business district of Decorah, a city of some 8,000 inhabitants in northeastern Iowa's Winnesheet County. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Mosaic Responses Mount Responses to Mosaic are growing, and many of those we've seen are thoughtful and well-targeted on issues of interest to sport flyers everywhere, especially in asking for more liberal stall speed specification and some elimination of unnecessary medical entanglements that LSA was originally supposed to do away with. The release of Mosaic just before the beginning of AirVenture caught many by surprise, especially in terms of what it constrained and how much ground it covered. ANN's exclusive first interview on the topic with EAA boss Jack Pelton underscored the organization's impression that this was a more complete rule than they expected, and contradicted much of the so-called Mosaic Specialist reports that claimed insider knowledge that apparently did not exist. But the rule is here now and it is up to each of us to write in, be heard, and respond carefully to the NPRM, which has a deadline of October 23rd. The NPRM is well over 300 pages and we've read it a few times, coming away with new thoughts each time, and it behooves each of us to look it over carefully before sending your thoughts to the FAA. And after these messages, Dark Arrow Update. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer, it adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Progress continues on Dark Arrow's upcoming aircraft. The Dark Arrow team has updated the current laundry list of tasks to prepare their prototype for flight, with work continuing on the fuel pump, aerodynamics, cooling system, and panel. Throughout July, the team worked on the fuel system, checking out their newly revised fuel sump tank for leaks and tilt tests. Slosh tests and a variety of positional adjustments tried to simulate the ham-handed maneuvering of a novice pilot to see how much fuel could transfer between the left and right tanks under a worst-case scenario. Tests look promising with the highest fuel transfer rate seen at 0.6 gallons per hour at a 5 degree angle. Further testing on the hydromat system checked to see how much fuel could be drawn from the sump, with less than 0.4 gallons of fuel left when the pump started sucking up air. The heat exchanger for the Dark Arrow 1's oil system also saw some tweaks, with the front aspect of the fuselage being analyzed for additional improvement. The team thinks that the current design of the oil cooler inlet will be perfectly functional, but said that their use of additive manufacturing and computer simulation will allow them to constantly and rapidly reiterate until they can achieve max performance. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!